you're going to speak to us, even me. If you don't hear anything, me, I'm going to hear everything. Because I'm alert to that. So, uh, to this week, my wife is here, I should introduce her. And the reason I'm introducing her, especially now, is that this week we are celebrating 32 years. <laughs> Of holy matrimony, not knowing her. So I'll tell you another day when how we live. <laughs> so today's topic, very interesting topic, is unusual experiences. And I looked at this, I said, what does this mean for us? And uh, I don't know what you think, but what came to me are the positives. You know, remarkable things that are remarkable, extraordinary. You know, these young people talk of amazing, eh? This is amazing. Well, that means it's unusual. I don't, but we want to focus on those remarkable, extraordinary. And as Pamela has said, uh, by the way, Pamela, thank you very much. You, 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 you did half of the sermon, and I do the other half. And I hope all of us will be blessed. So I want us to be on the same page, uh, building on what Pamela said, what an unusual experience is, something extraordinary. It's something that gets stuck in our mind. You can't forget it. So I want you to walk with me. Do you remember that time? That remarkable thing. Can you remember? Go there now. Are you there? Are you there, people online? Yeah. Go there and see what is that remarkable thing. So I'll give you a testimony. Of what I have many, many remarkable things. And I can tell you, God has rescued me from many, many troubles. So one of the things I can tell you in a minute is that in 1979, I don't know how many of you were born, I was a student in the secondary school when the war broke out and I found myself displaced. Over 250 kilometers away from home, and that was not a problem because I could manage. I thought as a result of that war, all my family had been wiped out, wiped out except me. So, long story short, I was rescued and reunited with my family miraculously. I'll give you details of that story sometime or a bit of it as we go along. Praise the Lord. So are you with me now? Do you have those remarkable stories, eh? Those, and later on, I thought I had done it in my wisdom. That's the more interesting part of it. The Lord said, it is me. That's what I learned later. So some of those remarkable things you have gone through, you think you were clever, but I want to tell you it was God. If they, so I pray that the Lord will really bless us in this service. That, as I said earlier, that we experience unusual. So I again read the word of God because uh, the word of God is good. You can read it many times and it is okay. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. And when you go to our Bibles, please keep moving the slides. Uh, we are talking about Peter's miraculous escape from prison. That's the topic. That's the area we are reading the text. We are reading. You may not read it, but I want to move with the slides. So, I go again, Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, Peter, he put him in prison, handing him over to the guard, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was honestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod, was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. 
and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision, dreaming. That's my word. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. I wish we could read on the whole the whole text and see how it ended that chapter. So I want us to I want to look at highlights from the scripture, mainly this one, but also others. But I would like us to ask three questions. I know all chapel uh, people who come here and those online have very sharp minds. So I want to challenge us with questions so that when we discuss, we are trying to answer those questions. So the questions are, they are there. What is the best foundation for a successful, miraculous escape? Yeah. So the key word is what? Best foundation. For you to be successful, you must have done something. So that's the question I would like us to address through this scripture we have read and what do you know about the Bible. The second question, uh, what are the main sources or causes of Christian trouble or persecution? We need to know so that we can guard ourselves. Then the other question, uh, what are the unusual experiences based on Peter? We shall pick from that and relate to Peter those experiences. The last one, which is not written there, is what are you going to do when you answer all these questions? How do you apply the, what we shall learn from the Lord today or what we shall, what he will speak to us after today? Now, we start with question number one. What is the foundation for a miraculous escape? And I'm going to use Peter as an example. When you read in John 1.41, there is a story where they talk of Andrew, who was the brother of Peter, introducing Peter to Jesus. And before he took him, he told Peter, you know what? I have found, I have found the other man they call the Messiah. For me, what I pick from there is that their family already, maybe in their quiet time at home, they, were, they used to read the Bible, and they had a clue there was a Messiah coming to rescue Israel. And so when Andrew tells him, Peter goes to meet Jesus. So my point number one in trying to answer that one is that Peter treasured and had a desire to see the Messiah. For you pick yours, me I'm picking mine. Remember we're answering the questions together. I'm only really giving you my notes. Is that okay? Now, the other point I can pick in trying to understand the foundation of Peter in, in finally trying to see how he got to escape, how he escaped miraculously, is that there is a time also Jesus was with the disciples, and when he told them, I'm the bread of life, we did miracles, and then people said, eh, but we know you, you, you're not, you're the other guy. Then they deserted him. But Peter and others, they decided to do what? To follow him. You remember that story in John? And then he said, Peter himself so he said, Lord, where shall we go? So, as part of Peter's foundation, 
he made a conscious decision to follow Jesus. This is the background to the miraculous escape. And it is, we are trying to understand is what? His foundation. There are many things you can get to Peter to understand his foundation. But the other third one I would like to bring to us is when he was asked, Jesus was asking his disciples, he asked them, people say I'm like this. You, who do you say I am? You remember what Peter said? In Matthew 16, 16, he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. That is a revelation. For you to understand that Jesus is the son of God, you must get a revelation. And when you get it, you can't look back. Me, I'm standing here to talk to you, but this is not the Geoffrey who should be speaking to you. I got a revelation that Jesus Christ is indeed the Son of God. So I said, mm -mm, the rest behind. I'll follow Jesus. So when you get a revelation, it makes life easier in your decision-making process and also so in how you commit yourself to what you are deciding. But also, Peter had his shortfalls. You remember? Peter sinned. He had followed Jesus, like all of us Christians, said, had identified him. But when at the time of trial, trouble, when trouble hit, and Jesus, his commander, was arrested, they asked him, Peter, you are also part of this group. You remember what he said? He said, no, 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 three times. <laughs> so it tells me that also... <laughs> Peter was also a human being like us, and he can he sinned, and we all sin every time. But what is important is when we sin, what do we do? I like, I think it is in, a, is it Matthew 26, 25? When Peter, after that, uh, yeah, I think it's Matthew 26, 75. You remember, that verse, I love it. Maybe I should read it. Please, let's read that verse. I think I marked it here. It here. Yeah, yes, yes. This is after uh, he had denied Jesus. And then Jesus looked at him. You know, when you deny Jesus and you look at him, or he looks at you, that means you must remain in fellowship. Because conviction of what you've done comes as a result of being close to the Lord. So Peter, the verse I want to read for you is that, then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. If you don't know the word the Lord spoke to you, what will you remember when you sin? When I sin, I need to have something in my mind that my father did this, my God said this, then it helps you to come back. So the verse I like is that before, then and the last part is B. And he, Peter, went outside and wept. After remembering the words of Jesus, he went outside and wept. For me, it gives me an indication that much as he had seen light at that point in his heart, he got the conviction and was turning back, although he was struggling as a human being. Now, finally, uh, about the foundation of Peter, there are many things. Let me end on this one. Last week, last Sunday, we were told how Peter with others, Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem until I've closed, been closed with the Holy Spirit. Now, a lying Peter, a timid Peter, and many others, when the Holy Spirit came upon them in Acts chapter 2, yeah, Peter became another Peter. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So this is the Peter we see, we have read in the text, where his foundation is that he had a very close relationship with Jesus at the time of his arrest. Are you getting where I'm coming from? You have your notes also. These are my notes. We are trying to answer the question, what is the foundation for a successful miraculous escape or rescue out of trouble or persecution? People on the line, are you there? Please chat. Tell us, are you with us? Peter, tell us, are they with us? Please give us the feedback. Now, I want quickly to look at uh, 
at what are the main sources or causes of Christian persecution? Or what lands us in trouble? And I'm not, this is a big thing. I'm not going to go into it. We all know it when we are baptized. They said we have become eh, soldiers of the Lord to do what? To fight what? If you say it, say it, what? Uh -huh, sin? Uh -huh, devil and? Those are the three things. Any trouble will either come from myself, I've sinned and it is bothering me, or it can come from the world, external, affecting me, or I, how I respond to the world, or the devil can lay a serious ambush. So I don't want to go there, but I want to just give you an indication that these things can affect, at a family level, at an individual level, at an organization level, a community level, we face trouble or persecution arising from those three. Are you with me? And so the persecution at different levels varies depending on, I remember in one of the villages I know there was a, a community where a, a night dancer had taken over control of the whole LC1 to the extent that nobody could walk after dark because the night dancer has come at night. Eh? So that community lived in total fear. Then God wanted to rescue that community. This is a true story. One day I'll bring those people who did this job and, and tell you these are the guys. There were two young people from one family who were in primary school. God used these people to deliver the community, to rescue the community. <laughs> these guys said, enough is enough. This fear of moving around in the village. Now when cows get out of a house, we go to get cows and we are in fear. We must look for this night dancer. These two young boys, a brother, two brothers, they went out and lay an ambush. Can you imagine primary school children? They bought paraffin. They had some, <laughs> and they had a matchbox. Their parents didn't know it, about this. So they sneaked at night and went out and lay an The man had taken over the village. Well, man or woman, I don't know. So when they got the nice to dance with their had sticks, they, they ran after him. Now they were bored, eh? filled by the Holy Spirit, I believe. They powered paraffin on him. They, they lit the matchbox. That was the end of the, what? the story. He didn't die. He, and as they told that he ran with it. They died with fire, but he ran. He survived. Later they knew, and I think he shifted from that village. So you can have a community that is really under a siege by Satan. And you just need to go to the street. I just want to give you some statistics on persecutions. When I was trying to, these are something also I didn't know, but the Lord led me to this internet and I looked at this. I said, hey, there is a, there is a, an organization called World Watch List. It carries out an annual assessment survey to find out which countries, the top 50, where there is highest level of Christian persecution. Please show us. I just managed to show you. And the, internet, the link is there. You can have it and, and surf it and see where in North Korea it is 94%. Now, 100 means real total suppression. You can't breathe. <laughs> So North Korea is at 94. Zero means there is complete freedom. So you can see, I was telling you that persecution or trouble can be at the national level, community, family. Eh? I was told some women are married into family and they say, you must do this. If you don't do this, you are not a member of this family. That is family persecution, something not Christian. Okay, but the more is the things to deal with is myself. And we need to talk about that. That about me. So I don't want to go into this slide, but I want you to know that trouble or persecution will come. You can see in North Korea, it is 94. In our neighbor, Kenya, I was asking myself, how about Kenya? Is also persecution, say the Ash, whatever. Is 62. Congo is 64. Uganda is zero. I didn't find it. Uh, you, clap for, you, you clap for it. <laughs> because you remember, those of you who are old in 71, there was some level of suppression. 
Anyway, the point I want to make is that trouble or persecution will come anyway and is real. You get me? What is important is how do we deal with it when we are in it or when, we, when it is about it. So let's go now to the main text and I want to start to wind up. I'm not winding up yet. I hope they give me a little more time. So what are the unusual experiences of Peter based on the text we have read? And remember, there is a question I didn't write. What are we learning from all this and what are we going to do? I kind of request that you keep reflecting on that. These are not stories, and I'm going to tell you stories, more stories. But please pick what you can pick. May the Holy Spirit speak to us. Now, we have, at the time we have read through the scripture that, and when you go back, Peter did ministry. I didn't mention that. When he was empowered with the Holy Spirit, he really did ministry. He preached, you remember last Sunday, they told us 3,000 came to the Lord. He touched people, miracles. He healed people who were lame. Beggar. You remember the other beggar? So he was in full-time ministry. He did excellent work for God. And the key word is that even amid his trouble, he did not give up. When you want to do good things, you are going to have trouble. Even within yourself, Paul tells us, whatever thing I want to do, I don't. You are yourself. You want to to lie, God is telling you, don't lie. That's the struggle. It, there's nobody even before Satan comes, you're alone. So what are we going to do? Is not to give up on God. Not to give up doing what is right. Even when we are in danger. Remember Peter? The reason he lied, he feared for his life. He feared to be arrested. And many of us can tell a lie to, to survive. But we are learning that from Peter's experience, after being empowered by the Holy Spirit, after knowing that James had been killed, when they threatened, so he didn't give up. That's point number one, which is an unusual experience. Are you getting that? When you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, when you have surrendered to God, you experience unusual. When you are threatened, you don't fear. You don't give up. It is an unusual experience. So people say, what's wrong with Geoffrey? I think he's foolish. When you don't do the norm, which is, a, eh, which is not correct. But for you, that is an unusual experience. You are not giving up on God. So that is point number one. Which Number two, which Pamela also raised, is that when he was in trouble, the church was praying. When you are in trouble, the easy, when you are in trouble, the easy thing you might call, if you have a call, a phone call, I am in trouble. There's a time I had a problem on the road, and I called, I said, I'm in trouble. But when it is real trouble, they remove phones from you. Eh? Like Peter, I don't think he had phones. Now, the unusual thing is that the church was doing what? Yes. But when did the, when did the church get to know Peter? Remember the foundation? He had a fellowship. He had, he had sorted them out. He had blessed them. Now when they had Peter, they cannot pray for you unless they know you, unless they relate with you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the unusual thing is the church to pray when you are in trouble without even calling them. That takes God. Now, the third point I pick from, there are many, but I want to pick, pick a few, and may the Lord speak to you also from the text. This is a common scripture, but the Lord has shown me something different I had never even a, a, picked from the same text. Now, you remember, we have read from the scripture that Peter was bound between, was guarded by how many four squads, of four soldiers. Do we have a soldier here? Please, if you don't fear to identify yourself. Or someone with military training or what? Aha, uh -huh, my friend is here. You can, you ask him quietly, a squad. <laughs> this was a squad of four. But a squad can even be between four and four. I'm not a military man, please don't get me wrong. Hmm? But I'm a soldier of the. Hallelujah. 
I tried three times to do military training. The Lord didn't allow me. He wanted me to be a soldier. And I'm here in the name of Jesus. So, a squad of four, and each of four, those are how many? 16 soldiers. And there were how many gates you had? Three. He was really guarded. But amid the story, this chains bound to the what? What was Peter doing? He was sleeping. Did you pick that? Hey, amid this trouble, the unusual thing is for you to be at peace. That's the point. Are you with me? So, this is what I'm picking from Peter. How can you be guarded like this? Then you know they killed James. He was sure. When you read the text, he knew he was going to be tried and killed. So, on the night before he was to be tried and killed, he was sleeping. Can you do that? Even when they call you for an interview, you don't sleep. When they, even when you are going to prepare a sermon, you may not sleep. <laughs> the unusual thing is not have anxiety, not have fear, not, but to do what? To be at rest. And let me tell you what happens when you are at rest. The Lord speaks. The Lord, he could not, if he was not asleep, where would he have got the vision? Because the Lord wanted to speak to him when he's not awake. Because other people would see, if the Lord appeared physically, they would see him. He needed him to be in a state of mind where he can only connect with the inner man, and that is rest. Are you with me? Now I'll give you a short testimony. Because we are celebrating marriage, let me use one of marriage now. We married when we were very young. And me, I am an African man, but a Christian now. So I needed babies. I needed many of them even. So it's quite a long story short. God gave me babies. Quickly, two. Before we woke up, we had two. But no. <laughs> then they stopped. I said, now what has happened to the top? Then anxiety came in. My wife, what's happening? We need children. Hey, hey, hey. This went on, to cut a long story short. Wait years, no babies. Anxiety. What is happening? Hey, hey. I am not at rest. Until the Lord intervened miraculously and rescued me. Now we're here. And that, that is a real stew I want us to take home with. Eh? Restue, where you are personally restored. That's when you get your breakthrough. Now, after about eight years, the Lord spoke to me clearly. I was getting closer to him. I surrendered. I said, this word, you know the word says, you don't have ba many babies. And they kept asking, what's wrong with you? You have only two. But you for why? I don't know where they were asking also. Or others. They, only two. And they, and they were girls. You have only two, and they are girls. <laughs> anyway, when I got peace over the state of my children and their gender, then babies started. Hallelujah. So I'm getting my point. The Lord will come and unusual. You experience him when you are at peace. He's a soft voice. He's quiet. He does not agree. This someone says, here's money. Do this. You be careful. The Lord comes quietly. And I'm coming to that point. The second last point I want to comment on. I don't know how much time I have. <laughs> Reverend, you better stop me because I can go on. Eh? You realize that when the angel spoke to him, because he was in a good state of mind, he obeyed. Not full awake. Did you know that you can obey when you are asleep or disobey? Hello? Can I go deeper? Eh, eh? Eh, in your sleep, you can commit sin because you have obeyed to do something in your sleep. So you need to have a good foundation so that even when you are sleeping, your soul will say no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is for another day. But this Peter, in his sleep, 
he could recognize the voice of God. He obeyed in his half. half of so obedience, that's the point I want to make. Obedience to God's word is fundamental to experiencing breakthroughs. <laughs> Let me go to the last one. I, that one we talk about every day. It's straightforward, isn't it? We must obey. And you cannot obey unless you know the voice. Unless you, unless you know how someone speaks. Then when he calls you, say, ah, that is Geoffrey. But if you don't know the Lord, how he speaks, he will tell you and you don't hear. Satan will come off a and say, ah, I'll get up. You are told the story where that the, the, the Satan told the man that the, the lady was dreaming. said, the, the, the other man will come to you. When he comes, you know he's the one. That certainly can come up for it. Now, the last one I want to end with in, a, in terms of experiences is, is you remember, I've just alluded to it, that Peter followed the angel out of prison, but he had no idea of what the angel was doing. He had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. Now, that is the unusual when you are in the, in the good things of God, at first, they don't make sense. You don't understand, but you follow. Hello? Are you with me? So, at first, you don't understand. They don't make sense. But because you hear the person you are following, you trust. You do? So, the level of understanding varies during the unusual experiences. So, initially, they don't make sense. There's a man, when I told I was born again, a big man, a CEO, he called me in a big hotel, five star. He said, Geoffrey, I had just lost my father. He knew I was out of my mind. He, 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 <laughs> so he called me. He said, what's wrong with you? He, gave, he bought tea, what, what, we talked, what, what, what. Then I talked to him, I talked to him, the Holy Spirit. A few months later, he gave his life to Christ. So it doesn't make sense to many people when the Lord has intervened miraculously in your life. But even you, you may not understand. But the second part is where the joy is, where the testimonies come. The second part is in the last verse, and that's where we end on this matter. Peter came to himself and said, Now I know. You say that to me. Now I know. Without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me. Hallelujah. This is later. Sometimes it can be, for Peter it was a short time, but for some of us it can be even later. You do things, you don't, they don't make sense, but you stick there. You stick there, following the Lord. Then later you say, oh, now I know. When I was a teenager, I end with that testimony. The other one is too deep. I got a real one. I, I got in trouble over some of the things I had, I had learned to do, which I thought were good. I was involved in sexual immorality, and I got in trouble. So I made a decision. The devil deceived me. That story now, the, the puzzle fits later. At that point, I didn't know it was the devil telling me, but he told me, now you're in trouble. You can't tell your father about this, and you are going to die. So why don't you finish yourself quickly? So I made a decision to commit suicide as a teenager in secondary school. The Lord rescued me. I'm here. Would I be here? He is. That's the end of the testimony. So this story I learned later, <laughs> when I got my life to Christ, that was the Lord who did what? At that time, at the beginning, it didn't make sense. I, was, I removed him myself to the point of dying. I was alone. There was nobody. The Lord rescued me. So I want to suggest, as I conclude, So I think I've broken the time frame. So I want to finish in the next five minutes, please. So the question I was asking, you want to make some suggestions. But I want to conclude by saying this. A godly foundation 
is a basis for miraculous living and a fulfilled life. So if you want miracles, people like miracles. I do and I live in miracles. I told my wife, this yesterday the other day, there are some of these things God does and you are amazed. I thought I would not give him more stories. I told my wife, come, come, come to my office. I said, she came, she was busy peeling and I said, please come. She came. When she reached there, I said, you know what? The Lord has shown me this. Something that had disappeared from me. I didn't know where it is. I said, God, now I don't know. Do you have experienced those miracles? If you really want those miracles, <laughs> The Lord, I, I was not looking for them. It just, the Holy Spirit just said, touch this one. Check under this one. I did. It was there. So, a God, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I can tell you I've experienced many miracles to tell you that if your foundation is better than yesterday, the, bell, the more miracles you are going to experience. Unusual experience. So I want to suggest four things, four, five Ds that can help us improve our good experience. And I want, I've already said this, so I'm mm -hmm. Make Quick unusual experiences, amazing things. Don't go there. Be careful. Deliverance, people don't be deceived. Deliverance is for the children of God. Hello, have you heard what I said? The rain can fall in a village and every reporter will have a harvest. But real, these unusual experiences we are talking about of God intervening are essentially for the children of God. I want to challenge us and to encourage us and to, to ask to follow Christ and be children of God. Now, finally, I think that verse we should, I read it, you might think it is me. In, in the Acts 12, the last verse, I think it was 24, I don't know, it's 24. No, 23. You know what happened to King Herod? He died. Who killed him? The angel. So, death, be sure, another D, we don't talk about this about much, but for the people who, the enemies of God, there is also another D. And what does it mean for us believers? Don't struggle to revenge. Just forgive. The Bible says, God says, it is me. Leave it for me to avenge. So once you know that the enemy is of God, and therefore, if, if you want to know how dangerous women can be, you touch their children. So the enemies of God, the enemies of children of God, God will deal with them. And it is D, D. The death, destruction, if they don't change, if we don't change, if we are here also. So I want to pray with you and end here, and I pray that the Lord will, please stand up. Uh, and uh, uh, please stand up and we'll pray. There is a song I keep singing alone. I am going to ask my wife to come here and we we'll sing it. I didn't prepare her. Please come. There is a song I sing as a testimony of God. Because we are together, there is no COVID social distance. You come near. So, it is a Nyankore song. And two stanzas are enough. If possible, please sing this song when we are collecting. It seems it's a Nyankore song. She's better at singing. So, use the microphone. I'll go. It says, I will learn my sing. Get the Okay, I 
so much for your word. We thank you for the way you're speaking to me and my brothers and sisters in this chapel and online and those who will watch and listen this message. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to teach us the mysteries of your kingdom, that we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. Lord God, we want to thank you for the many miraculous escapes you have given us. Each one of us thought about one or two. We thank you because you have been with us before we knew you, before we came to church, even started attending church, you were with us. And you are reminding us that it is you who did it. And so we thank you, we thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you give us the grace to persevere when we are in trouble, that we shall not give up, that we shall wait on you and we shall be at peace as you speak to us, that we hear you and take appropriate action and obey. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that for some of us in trouble, in finances, in, in health, what, in family challenges, even in the nations, whatever it is in our communities, even at individual level, Lord, we cannot save ourselves, but you can save us. We pray that, Lord Jesus, you will intervene miraculously and rescue us. We pray that, Lord, you rescue our brothers and sisters, our loved ones, our relatives and friends, that we shall know you and wait on you, that shall not fear, because you who is in us is greater than the one out there. We thank you and bless you. That you, Lord, I pray that you bless my people, bless me, O oh God, bless all of us. That Lord, we shall not give up. That we shall have that inner strength to trust and wait on you. And as we cry to you, Lord, please hear our prayers and deliver us. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. 